Oh, hello. I'm just reading the Fiend Folio, a little light reading. Thank you for coming and joining us today. The Stony Brook Game Developers, these students have put together a great event for you. Here we have this COVID crisis. But they've put a great online event for you together. Uh, I'm actually in my office here at Stony Brook. I think I'm the only person on campus. I haven't seen a single soul anywhere else. But we are still going to give away the plaque this year. We have had judges from across the country say they want to participate. So we have more than 40-something judges, alumni who many of them are still angry about having lost this competition in the past. But some of them won it and are eager to see who wins this year. Anyway, I'm going to hand it off to our hosts from the Stony Brook Game Developers, JJ Salvador and Liz Albano. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 16th annual Stony Brook University Game Programming Competition, as stated below. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the co-hosts. I'm JJ Salvador. I am the president of the Stony Brook Game Developers. Hi, I'm Liz. I am the PR of the Stony Brook Game Developers. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for coming. I see so many wonderful users in the chat. Barums is here. Bat Blaster Wing is here. Uh, so thanks, thank you guys for coming. Uh, we hope that this is going to be a fun event. Uh, and thank you to all the, all the judges who are here, who have taken time out of their day to come to our humble little event. All right. If we're, do, you, do you have anything else to say, Liz? Or? Uh, nope, I think we should just start and get started. All right. Then we'll just get right into it. I believe our first game takes place in a very dark, bleak, hopeless world. Not like, not like that of our own. All right, Liz, I need cool, cool trailer music. Get ready for this. I'm about to introduce cool the next game. Music. Cool trailer music. Just do it for me. Do do. Oh. In a world <laughs> so bleak, Boom. a land taken over by disease. Oh boy. One man. I don't alone, know what you're doing or saying. Riding his bicycle into other people's bicycles. <laughs> come on, come on, Liz, stay with me. <laughs> In a bleak world. Anyway, that was the trailer for uh, our first game called uh, Bleak Biker. I believe they're ready, so uh, I'm just going to take you guys uh take you guys over there now. All right, cool. It's Hi. Hello, Hello, my name is Usman. And my name is Nicholas. Uh, we're here to present our game, uh, Bleak Biker. So. Alrighty, so our uh, this game is basically a uh, shoot 'em up with an emphasis on high speed action and close quarter combat. Uh, Nick, if you want to go ahead and start. Uh, I'm going to go through a playthrough of the game as uh, Usman commentates for a bit. Uh, there are two options for offensive. Uh, attacks. There's the long range rapid fire, uh, typical for bullet hell genre, but there's also an ability to swipe on your sides as a melee. Mm -hmm. It offers. Right. Sorry. Uh, you want to go ahead? Right. Yep, starting level one. The visual aesthetic here, uh, we uh, were inspired by an older anime, just like older animes in general, like uh, 
Fist of the North or, and uh, Akira with bits of Mad Max and uh, Kamen Rider as well. Um, the attacks here, uh, the enemies and the entities here offer dynamic positioning, uh, which changes how you focus your attack. For example, there were car enemies that you saw on the screen that sweep across the bottom of the screen, which you can't quite fire directly, so you kind of have to use your swipe. So players get to learn how to use every aspect of their attack. Other enemies can stick on the top of the screen, like you see over here. And right here, we have our first boss, the tank. Uh, it moves in a, a simple pattern, a square-like pattern. And, um... Oops. I think the stream's lagging there. Y'all good? All right. Uh, I hear you. So, for the time that it was in the lower half of the screen, that's kind of a way to get the player to use the melee attacks over just the long range. Um, each enemy, as you saw, had a different uh, point value, like the enemy had a massive amount of points, and every time you killed an enemy, your score multiplier increased, and every time you got damaged, your score multiplier decreased. Uh, are you still talking? Uh, that's about all the points I have for this. Okay, so this level here, um, here as we saw, it uh, we started off with, with a bunch of enemies from level 1, who, um, we are now transitioning to uh, the level the set of enemies in level two, which, which uh, are a lot more long range focused than the ones you've seen prior. prior like uh, these, like these uh, harpy kind of enemies that stick very at the very top of the screen. So it it emphasizes more traditional uh, bullet hell navigation. Um, and all right. Uh, and just now we're going to be coming up to the second boss, uh, Aegis, they're the leader of the, of the enemy force, uh, called Euroboros. Um, their pat, uh, Aegis's attack pattern is meant to sort of be like a rival fight for the player, almost. They use similar, uh, attacks that, that, that the player can use, so use, like, they can, they also engage in, like, these these sort of sub melee swipes and also have enough have a sh straight rapid fire of their own um and one feature is that that uh uh the music is 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 uh it's not our music uh we we are just, it's uh it was uh made by paragon x9 uh, their their credits are featured in the about screen on the title screen. Um, yeah, and one feature, another feature about this boss is that as they're low on health, we get uh, new. The he just starts using different attack patterns. Um, all right, and this is the end of the second level. Um, One other uh, feature we have is this this uh, part of the GUI is dedicated to uh, showing the player like what keys they're pressing at any at any certain point. Um, all right, and here's the fi final boss. Final boss uh, has several phases to it, um, where they will shield themselves while summoning enemies that you must uh, defeat. Uh, and then, and then, and then we get to another phase where where we, where you have to attack them head on. Um, 
And while you can't approach uh, the final boss us normally in this level because of because of the different uh, ge like perspective here, here you can't cross the horizon line up here. Uh, these enemies, these these enemies that they summon also are sometimes better approached with melee. Um, yep. And. And we're getting close to the end here. So okay. and uh, this in a moment will be the last pattern. pattern it's a bit yep. and, and with that that's uh the final boss of the game. All done. Uh, Alrighty. Yeah. Uh, thank you. And uh, thank you All for right. giving Bleak Biker a shot. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed. display on the left side of the screen well what? uh for the live key display um so a lot of the time when you're streaming on twitch like people like to have a live uh, key press display uh not only that but uh whether you like it or not not everyone reads the controls page so just having the live key press on the left side for anyone who decides to skip over the uh about page for, uh, to get the controls um it's at least something to guide them rather than them just pressing, uh, just kind of mashing their keyboard and pressing random buttons. Hey guys, nice job looking game. Um, curious, what was the thinking behind the perspective switch on the third level, the boss round? Uh, well, uh, the final boss, he designed it to be sort of like a flying thing, and it's just like one of the things that we sort of, that uh, I found sort of, we found sort of difficult when the designing like the layouts of the like the aesthetics of the levels was that um, like in normal bullet hells you're kind of like flying above above, so that lets a lot of like room for having a bunch of little visual flair. But uh, that was one of the difficulties was that like when you're on when you're grounded so much. You can't. You, there's much less to see, so we decided to try this uh, experimental perspective on uh, stage three to to try to get a bit more uh, to view, a mo little, little bit more you know, of the art style to view. Um, and it's it's also pretty typical in like uh, sh uh, shoot 'em ups as well to have sort of like warped perspectives. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was nice, uh, a, a change of perspective, keep things kind of new and fresh as it goes on. Thanks. So, I have a question more about the, the sword swing, like the melee swing left and right. Uh, is your game uh, most likely to change genre as something like Raiden, where you have a laser, and then you have like some other kind of secondary weapon, which is usually a um, or some other more blast radius type thing. Sorry, this design, it, more of the action seems to be vertical, so more of your enemies are coming from the top. 
And I wanted to know what thought, what kind of thoughts did you put into having sideway attacks? Did you play with it? Didn't seem like you played with it too much. Like there weren't too many obstacles or enemies engaged you from the sides, and most of the action seems to be vertical. I was just wondering, um, maybe you ran out of time, or you didn't have time to implement. Um, some more obstacles that come on the side, but what thoughts did you have put into that? I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I had a bit of a connection hiccup. Could, could you repeat some of that? You were mentioning about uh, things coming out of the side and obstacles. Okay. Hello? So the question was, here, I'll repeat it for you since this is kind of your area. So the question was, uh, like you saw a lot of the enemies, like he said, um, a lot of the attacks were vertical and a lot of uh, bullet hell games sort of allow uh, secondary weapons that sort of like dropping a bomb or maybe a horizontal attack. Um, okay. Well, so, uh, um, uh, so the question was... It wasn't was, really so much of a developmental thing. It was more just like uh, I wanted to have this sort of uh, melee sort of focused... Uh, one of one of the games we like looked at was uh, Road Rage that had that features a lot of sort of like like combat while on motorcycles and that was sort of sort of uh, inspiration for it. I'm also not I also am terrible at using uh, bombs in in shoot 'em ups myself, but yeah. I come through. Did that all go through? Okay. Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, so as you can see, we have an amazing array of judges from all across the country. There are people watching us in California and all over. So we're really happy to have them all here. They're asking questions. At the end, they're going to get a form and they're going to vote on their favorite game this year. So we're really excited for that. Um, and now it's time to introduce the next game, I think. Yeah, thank you so much to you guys. Uh, thanks for coming out. So I'm excited, Liz, because I think we're going to see a lot of cool game genres coming out. And I'm excited to see people mix and match those game genres. Do you have any cool like game genre mixes that have never before seen game genre mixes that you think would be a, a cool game? I have no idea. There's probably <laughs> a mix up of every genre possible. But I don't know, maybe like a racing game with like um, a horror game. game. That would be an interesting one. Race racing horror. Racing horror game. <laughs> that sounds terrifying. I would say I would say I'd be excited to play. Somebody saw my Kirby shirt. Eh. Okay, I <laughs> I'd say I'd be excited to play a stealth rhythm game. I think that stealth would... rhythm. Yeah, I think that's. Very counterintuitive, but I'd love to see it happen. Anyway, <laughs> why are we talking about this? Because this next game is, is going to be a strange mashup, I think you'll find. Uh, this one's called Cupid's Bullet. All right. We're good to switch over now. Hey guys, uh, I'm Joe Weaver. I'm Daniel Bacall. I'm Lacey Stein. And uh, this is our game, Cupid's Bullet, which is a 
mashup between a dating sim and a bullet hell machine. Yeah, uh, so one of the things to note in our game, uh, everything, uh, all of the arts and all all of the music and everything is completely original. Uh, we made all the art, the music, the sound effects, and even the fonts are all custom made. So we're going to get started by making a, an account for our player character. Uh, so this is going to affect, you know, their initial stats to help them in the bullet hell portion of the game. So. So this is mimicking signing up for a dating website. So the dating sim part of our game kind of mimics like a more traditional uh, dating website that you might use uh, to find love. Uh, because in this game, you know, we're leading up to Valentine's Day. And so we're trying to get out in the dating world. We're building our dating profile, trying to get some, some matches and, and find our Valentine's date. Uh, but the bullet hell portion of the game is, as we know, love is a complicated thing. It's not. It's not so easy. So once you ask somebody on a date, you have to fight for it. And so the bullet help portion of the game, you're battling the enemy suitors to secure uh, your Valentine's date, ultimately. So up to the first interesting part of our game where we have a skill tree. So you're going to specialize into who you are attracted to. So I'm going to just say both so you can see some profiles. We'll just go through that the people we like. So everyone is randomly generated, all their appearances, names, bios. Yeah, and also the bio generation. Um, like in real life, people have preferences for certain personality traits, and so all of the randomly generated people and their bios kind of reflect some of the personality traits that either they are drawn to or that they dislike in people. And so if you actually you know, read the, the bios of the people, you'll you'll find little hints and clues of things to either maybe say to them or things to avoid saying. So, so here's our, yeah, this is our profile. So the bio the that we have, bio. Right, questions that we asked. Yeah. So yeah, here are all of our matches that we made from earlier in the day. And so there's five different personality types. You have jock, flirty, and then you have intelligent, humorous, and sincere. And all of the characters will either have a preference or are neutral to or dislike each of those personality traits. Um, so you wanna try to send them messages that they'll like and avoid messaging things they won't. Um, this is the gym tab. So this is one of the mini games that you can use to boost your stats. So this boosts your jock stat. If you mash the space bar for gains, you can get ripped, get real big, and uh, then you'll increase your jock stat. Um, and all of the stats actually help you in the bullet hell portion of the game. So your stats kind of correlate to bonuses in the fight, such as increasing your damage, your movement speed, your health, um, and things like that. And those correlations are made to you in those little ads that pop up introducing the new mini games. And also if you go to the help menu in our game. Here's an example of another uh, mini game we have, Tycoos. All of these are randomly generated. Um, although it may not look like it, you know, they're pretty, pretty poetic. Um, it's a little hard to tell, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, believe it or not, we didn't get all of those haikus from traditional yeah. Japanese literature. We actually are randomly generating them. I know that might be a little hard to believe. We have knock-knock jokes here to increase your humor if you play along with the knock-knock joke. They're very funny. Hilarious, as I'm sure you can see. Funny, funny stuff. And then here's our final mini game, which is the math mini game, which obviously will increase your intellect um, and you know win win the hearts of some people. And um, you know, so that's another feature of the mini games, uh, like how if you send messages to people, they can either like or dislike the type of message that you've sent. Um, the players that have preferences in their bios toward maybe funny people or jocks or intelligent people. When you perform and correctly do the mini games, 
So like if I was trying to pursue somebody who was interested in intelligent people and I was succeeding in the math tab, I would increase my relationship meter with that person. Um, but then if I was in the math tab and I was getting every math problem wrong, uh, somebody that liked intel intel intelligence would dislike me more for every math problem that I got wrong. And so if after you've dated everyone, uh, you think you're good to go, um, well, you'd have to wait um, and boost your profile. But I'm going to use a, a little skip here to get to the end. So it tells you your score, which, you know, I we have cheated a little bit, so they're all 100, but it wouldn't necessarily be this easy. Uh, so we're going to we're gonna pick a good old stranger here. And um, yeah, so you choose your date, and if you choose somebody with a heart, that means you did really well with them during the day, you get a boost in your health in the bullet health portion of the game. So as you can see, there are three different types of enemies. We have the blue enemies that kind of wander around aimlessly um, and fire fire large bullets at will. We have the pink shotgunners that um, fire like a burst of smaller bullets, and then the purple enemies that run down and fire in all directions. Cool. So that's the first date secured. Um, which is great. So, you know, we were able to fight off the suitors. We, we successfully asked uh, our, our player out on a date. And um, so now progressing into the later days. Um, so for, for day two, yeah, um, the, you have less time each day. So day one is five minutes, day two is four minutes, day three is three minutes. Um, but to compensate for that, each mini game gives you more or less of each stat, um, but it's just harder to make matches and build the relationship meter. And the end of day fight for each of the three days uh, is different. They're all, all different fights. And they get progressively harder. Yeah, which it doesn't look like it right now because we're using cheats, but... Uh... So, yes, on the skill tree, we selected bigger enemies. So, as you can see, they are easier to hit. Right, yeah, the bigger enemies are easier to hit, but their bullets are also bigger, so it's easier to get hit by them. So, it's a bit of a trade-off. So cool. for our last uh, bit, we'll use the, uh, the most overpowered. Our, our, yeah, our, our favorite and most broken Easter egg in the whole game, uh, logging in as the Makilla Gorilla. Um, so directly towards the boss, uh, which gonna give us the most power possible here. So our boss here is Chad. Now Chad is the ultimate date, right? So we have to get around him. So who wouldn't want a date? Yeah, Chad is, is the ultimate player. stealer of dates. Yeah. So you do want to get Chad out of the picture uh, because it's it's hard to feel secure in a relationship knowing that people like Chad are out there. So face one Chad, he uh, flies around and he shoots bombs. Yeah, he, he also spawns, he spawns uh, enemies as well, um, randomly as you can see. And now phase two of Chad, which is coming up, gets a little harder. His shirt flies off, rips off. You also want to don't get hit by Chad when he's running around because he will knock into you, pushing you back and also dealing damage. So it's best to avoid him. Looks like I'm actually going to win it. And now you don't have to worry about Chad, which is fantastic. Long last. Search for love is over. That's right. Like, you, were, you were able to successfully get three dates leading up to Valentine's Day. You asked somebody to be your Valentine and defeated Chad, the ultimate final boss, and were able to really find true love, which is the whole point of the game. Yep. Uh, I mean, I think I think that's 
that's all. I think we're ready for the Q and A portion yeah. if time, if that's what time allows. Yeah. So, guys, Chris Aaron, great job on the game. Um, I was just curious, you, you guys had a ton of stuff in there. And I was just wondering if you could add one thing, would you do it? And if so, what would it be? Um, so I have an answer personally. <laughs> uh, well, actually, no, Joe, you go first. You go first. I think we probably have the same thing. Uh, we talked about, uh, and we're thinking about for a while, adding like uh, an endless mode of the bullet hell to like, you know, add some playability after you've completed the main portion of the game. Um, so I think I think that would be something that would be pretty fun to add. Yeah, that would be the, that was the feature I was thinking of too, a more an endless battle mode. Gotcha. All right. Well, great job, guys. Good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do you have a question, JJ? We're happy to answer all questions, really. <laughs> we could even go to Twitch chat. Thank you. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so these have all been such great games, and it's super cool that we still get to communicate and everything during these hard times with the quarantine and everything. So it's really great that we can see all of you on Twitch and hold this competition, even from our houses, um, and send messages and receive messages. JJ, I'm going to send you a message right now.
Thank you, Liz. All right. I have received the message. You could say that my so. message is received. So I'm going to take you guys to the next game. I think your audio cut received. out for a little bit. I think it's back. All right, cool. All right. I'm, I'm switching over now. Goodbye. Uh, hello, I'm Matthews. Hello, uh, Matthew Stern. Yeah, hello, I'm Ron Rojo from part of the Messenger Safe team. Hi, everyone. I'm David. Uh, we have created an RTS in space. Let's get the music going. Uh, do you mind lowering it a bit? The volume. Okay, so we have three levels made so far. In it, the goal is to not die and destroy either all the human bases and or alien bases in the game. You start off with five ships. Uh, three of them are fighter ships and two of them are builder ships. Uh, all ships can fight, shield, and move and the builder ships can exclusively build. What you can build are satellites on the right-hand corner, which will expand out the clouds that you see, and they come in different flavors. There's uh, the low-range satellites, which have the smallest vision. There's larger-range satellites that have larger vision, and the blue, dark blue, is the largest range. Then you have yellow and red satellites. The yellow satellites will warn you if an enemy is nearby, and the red satellites, if an enemy is nearby, will shoot them. Then on the, in the middle, there are, uh, we're just cheating right now a bit, making it easier. There's factories to build workers, and there's also factories to build more uh, fighters. Do you want to build a, a turret on, this, on the planet? And take care of the pirate on the left-hand corner? Make sure to protect your builder when it's in the construction. Otherwise, you won't get the thing. Yeah. Uh, you can also build, if you show the build menu one more time. On the left-hand corner are resource generating things that will generate resources that you see on the right-hand side. Since you need to manage how much money, oil, steel, coal, and oil that you have. And they generate over time. Now, as you can see around you, there are clouds that you can only see and traverse if you move your unit through the clouds or have satellites. The satellites are connected in a grid to Earth. Should a satellite in between uh, or anything connected to Earth and another uh, category of satellites is to be destroyed, you will lose your vision to uh, that satellite. So if you say destroy the blue and the red one up beyond yeah, the, the top two, And I think you need to destroy that one as well. This one, is it too close to Earth? It should close up. Oh. Anyways, do you want to start fighting and finding the other uh, humans or aliens in this level? I think the satellite's too close to Earth. As you can see, we're moving the units now. And there are humans down here that are trying to build satellites and expand their base as well. They can only see based on their satellites. Oh, right now, as you can see, we're getting hurt by asteroids. Be careful of those. Uh, the humans 
are trying to build out and find your base. Once they find different bases, including other AI bases, they will try to rush the bases that's closest to them and destroy it. There are also a few humans that will just roam around naturally instead of uh, staying with their base, but most in this case are gonna stay with their base. If you want to win this, you have to go for their base in the bottom left in this level, I believe. Right now, since we have a lot of ships due to cheating, it's not as hard as a fight. It's a little unfair based on how many we have. Yeah, and since we remove the clouds for the play here, yeah. it will be harder in extra case. If you had the clouds on, do you mind turning them on again? Yeah. This is all you really would be seeing. You wouldn't have much of a concept of what's around you until you built out or memorized where things are. It's a little bit more dangerous to just go out. Uh, you can also send all the units at home at once, if you'd like, uh, using the units menu. Yeah. Watch out for black holes, maybe. Just don't put your units in them. It will one shot kill your units. Uh, yeah. And then there's a lot of AI bots that you haven't seen as many. You saw the pirates, and on the right you can see a rogue. Uh, pirates go around trying to attack uh, planets. Rogues will go around randomly just trying to attack players. Then there's um, rebels that we, I have not seen a rebel yet on screen, but rebels will generally attack your satellites. And then we have another AI bot called the alien, which is not in this level. I think it's in level two or three. Uh, where if you if it finds you and kills your ship and it does not die, it will come right to your planet and try to attack you. Do you want to say anything? Yeah, and there are many planets in the map. You can use any of them to build any building site for your resources and factories. But the AI will automatically destroy the planet. So you need to also protect them from losing all of your money. Uh, should your all your units die and you had no way to generate more units, you will uh, lose the game since you can't continue without anything. There's also a resource menu if you open that up. If you're in a pinch and need more resources, you can buy and sell your resources. Yeah, you are definitely needed for the early game. Um, do you want to try and play normally without cheating this time? Yeah, do you mind playing without the cheats? So just no more play? Yeah. Sure. So now we're going to play without cheating, and now you have to actually expand and build satellites. Over on the bottom left is the uh, rebel, who is trying to destroy your satellite. Now he's building oil, because that's a cheap thing to buy. Standing out. That is to make power. Over there is a rogue, as you see, is passing by. It did not see you. Okay, it's done building. Now you should be just generating oil, and I think coal. And on the bottom, you can see a bar showing that there is a new worker being built. On the bottom left hand corner, you can also see there's a uh, radar, which shows you what units are in range of your satellite grid. When you build a new satellite, your radar will scale with the uh, new satellites. That's how it's connected to the either Earth or that blue one to the right, I'm not sure. Now we are build.
don't yeah it seems like he doesn't have enough resources yet oh yeah the resources are low so you'd have to sell that was a pirate as we just killed oh a human has found us this might be a roaming human ah, i ran away because it does not want to die Sell, selling off to get more gold. Buying more oil. Building another power. Okay, uh, now that that is our game, message received, and thank you for yeah. uh, seeing our game. Thank you. Hello. Hey, I just had a uh, quick question. Um, so, what was the win condition of that mission? Uh, if you killed the the humans' planet, you would win. Yeah, that's for level one. You just need to yeah destroy the enemy base. For level two and level three, there are more yeah requirements. Okay, I see. Hey everyone, welcome back. We've had quite a few great games already. We've got a whole bunch more to go. So, JJ, I have a question for you. I look what this way? Yes, Liz, what is your question for me that I am speaking directly to you? Okay. What do you think is the biggest organ in the body? The biggest organ in the body, I think, is... I think it's the small intestine. Is it, like, the longest? No. No? no? You can't, like... I heard you could, like, wrap it around the earth. So the biggest organ is actually the skin. The skin? The, sk yes. the skin is an organ? Yes. Really? <laughs> I just thought it was skin. Hmm? But why, it why... serves a purpose, it does its thing. <laughs> but Liz, why are we talking about organs right now? Well, not because the next game is about internal organs at all, I guess. <laughs> well, the next game, I believe, is called Organic. Which is not about organs. All right, well, time to go there. <laughs> All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Daniel. I am a senior that recently graduated last week. 
Uh, I majored in computer science and I specialize in game programming. So uh, before I talk about my game, I actually want to talk about this application as a whole first. Um, so essentially what I created here is a simulation of a real life organ that's found in Atlantic City in the Boardwalk Hall Auditorium. Um, so if we go on the about page here, it basically just lists out um, some details about the real life organ. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so it was it was in it was built in May 1929, but it has gone through some reconstructions over the years. And in 2013, they actually remodeled it. And this is what it looks like. So before we get into the game, I actually want to go over the, the application first, like the simulation. So if we go on the explore page here, what you see here is the organ itself. Um, before I actually play it, I actually want to explore quite a bit. So if I press F, I could stand and basically explore um, this organ. So if I use the left click, uh, it ascends me. If I do right click, it descends me. And then with WASD, I can just move around like this. Like so, um, ignore the skybox. I kind of just found this online um, to make the, the mood more fitting for a boardwalk <laughs> organ. But this organ is actually located inside an auditorium, so it wouldn't really look like this. So if you go back in the organ by pressing F, um, you'll see that there are seven rows of keys. Uh, if you click left or right, it moves uh, which section of the uh, row you want to play. And then if you move up or down, uh, it highlights which row that you want to play. Um, so yeah, uh, the way you play this organ is with the keys one through zero or one through minus for the black keys. And then Q through P for the web keys. Um, so yeah, it's a bit quiet right now, but if you go in the other rows, this is where the organ keys are located. So there's this sound and then there's this other sound. And all of these keys are working. They all uh, they all sound like organs. And then the top rows, I actually don't know what it is. I just kind of found it online, but this is essentially what it sounds like. So yeah, that's the whole simulation of the organ. Uh, if we go back to the main menu, actually, I made a mini game over these past few weeks where it's essentially a rhythm game. Um, if you guys ever played rhythm games like, I don't know, uh, Guitar Hero or like, um, like Tap Tap Revenge back in the days, um, you'll see that those rhythm games, there's going to be like a indicator of when you hit the notes. And that's essentially what kind of this is. Um, so I'll go in easy mode first. So let's start the game. Uh, hold on. This game is a bit quiet. OK, so if we go play here. And then we start the game. Um, because graduation was last week, I thought it'd be fitting to just play uh, one song that resonated with me uh, last week, which is Pop and, Circ Pop and Circumstance. So uh, how this game works is once the, the four counts are up, um, there's going to be red keys that you click on. And then you basically have to hit those notes with the keyboard. Um, and then if you hit the right key, like so, uh, you'll, you'll accumulate points. But if you hit the wrong key, uh, you see at the top left that you're actually going down in points. Um, so yeah, that's the basic gist of the game. Um, excuse me while I play this. I'm not a very good piano player. I don't really play piano. So I'll just try to play the game as best as I can. Okay, you guys don't have to see that horrible rendition of my playing. So if you look at the, the row above, it's actually the bass notes that are playing in another row. And then this is where the uh, treble notes are playing. Um, so yeah, excuse my playing there. You guys don't want to hear me play that. So what I'll do instead is go to hard difficulty and actually auto play this so that you see how it actually sounds like. And throughout this entire duration, I'll just let it play. So you guys get to see what it sounds like. Thank you. 
And yeah, that was a pop and circumstance. Uh, that's it for my presentation. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Thank you. Hey, can you hear me? Uh, hey, what's up? Sorry, my webcam's hey. not working. Um, I have a question. Hey, How can you hear me? Generate the audio. Uh, Sorry, what was that? Right. How did you generate the audio, like all the sounds? So I found, oh, these, I found notes these notes. In, in... Yeah, so I found these notes individually online. Um, I just kind of Googled them, and then I downloaded each individual note. Um, there's actually a virtual piano that I found online and I recorded them myself uh, using uh, Audacity. So I manually recorded each note and then set them to each uh, game object in the application, which is which was created through Unity. So, yeah. So is there any limitation to like the amount of voicings? Because I guess you're just triggering the, the sound for each game object. Yeah, that's essentially what I'm doing. Um, what I had intended originally was synthesizing my own sounds, um, but that's a lot of work uh, beyond my scope of knowledge and uh, for the purpose of this program. I just made it so that each key would be manually set to an individual uh, wave file instead of like synthesizing everything. Yeah, no, cool. Yeah, cool project. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Martin. Uh, quest, uh, curious, how did you get the score imported into your system and connected to everything? Did you manually do that, or do you have some tech that you've built to import the sheet music? Oh, so I put every single note in like a CSV file, and then I using a script, I translated those CSV files so that they would correspond to each individual note. So it was a lot of, it was pretty time consuming making like the entire song, but this is the end product of all of, all of it. So yeah. Nice work. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I had a question. Normally in the rhythm games that you're you're kind of going after here. You've got some sort of, you've got some sort of um, like scroll of what the notes are going to be. So if I don't know the song, uh, how do I know what notes are coming up? It wasn't quite clear from the uh, from the demo that you had. So it seems more like a like a rocksmith kind of game where you've got to know the song beforehand rather than play it up. Yeah, that's what I had originally intended to do was make okay. some sort of like playing board to see which notes would come up like beforehand. But uh, due to time constraints, I wasn't able to do that. So I was just kind of highlighting each individual key as they were being played rather than have them show up on, the on like a, a playing board. Um, okay. But yeah, that is something that I had thought of doing. But yeah, due to time constraints, I just wasn't able to do it. So yeah. Cool. Thanks. Hey everyone! Hello um, again. Welcome back. So that was not about organs. Not the ones we <laughs> but it was about, about organs. It was and it wasn't. It was great to hear the graduation song for all the people that were graduating. That but is nice. Probably. 
So, um, JJ, I'm going to pull a complete 180 on you. Are you what? now? Yes. Uh, so what, what is your favorite sport to play? My favorite sport? to Well, I don't play sports. But what I do follow <laughs> is my favorite sport, competitive mini golf. I love competitive mini golf. My favorite is Michael Jordan from the Space Jam movie, who has taught me many a trick on the windmill hole. But why did you ask me about my favorite sport, Liz? Well, the next game is about puzzled golf, and I would totally like to learn what that means. So wow, incredible. we should get going over there. Maybe this time you guys won't get your expectations subverted. <laughs> Um, hello, I'm Chrissy. Uh, hi, I'm C1. And hi, I'm Billy. So we created Puzzled Golf, and ours is a spinoff on like mini golf, uh, where players try to avoid obstacles um, such as lava, water, and sand terrains. And you'll also have to be like unlocking doors and disabling lasers, as well as like spawning new golf balls. So now C1's going to play a few levels for us. Okay. I'm going to uh, turn up the volume. Can, can everybody hear this? Okay. Oh, it's a bit choppy on my screen. But... So this is the splash screen, and we have this, you know, window here. Let me just click with this, continue. Um, so this is our main menu. We have the total score here and a bunch of help menus and buttons for us to click. Uh, this is the mute button for the music. And this is the about page. Uh, the music is really static here on my end, so I'm actually going to mute it. Uh, but I think the effect will still play. So this is our first level. Uh, in each level, we'll have the stroke number, the level number, and what the par range is for that level. And this is our main menu. Like the menu for the level, we could restart, go back to the main menu, and click on the help button. Um, yeah. Uh, this is a really beginner level. It's really easy. I should, I should usually get this in the park. Oh. So this is one of the features that were implemented. When you going over the hole too fast, it doesn't actually count because to assimilate the hole on um, the ball going over the hole. And if you go over it slower, slowly, it, it should get in the hole. And we landed a score of two, which is two above the par. And this should be added to our total score, as you can see here. And I can continue on with the next level. That's the, that's the when the ball goes back and goes in the water. It sets it back to the previous location, and the stroke will obviously uh, increase by one. And so we're all simple level. Nothing crazy. Uh, this is our development tool. We use this to unlock all the other levels, and I'm about to show us a more difficult level. Uh, on level 16, we, since this is a bigger map, we introduced a new, new mechanic um, of controlling the camera and moving it through WASD. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's different obstacles like pressure plate that corresponds to the color and opens laser or the door. And this is a portal-like ob ob obstacle. So I'm take a slow here. Um, if you get if you land in the water and press the pressure plate at the same time, the pressure plate doesn't trigger it. It only opens the door or does the check when um when the boss stops. Force it too hard. It should open now. And I'm gonna open this as well. This is a boss spawner. It will spawn another ball at a, at a designated location. I'm gonna trigger this. And here's another ball. Just so that you can clear the gap. And obviously, we could click on the next level to proceed and whatnot. Uh, I'm not gonna show it. Uh, this is our other development tool where we can show all the mechanics that are currently available in the game. Just like you see the boss finder into the lava and go into the water, all the pressure plate. As well as the portals. The red one stops you and the blue one continues your momentum. And obviously it works with the other ball and you can win. And that's basically our game. It's just a simple simple mini golf game. Thank you for listening. Hi. Can you see me here? Uh, we could hear you. You could hear me. Okay. Yes. Uh, cool. Hey, so I'm Mirage. I'm one of the judges. So, uh, wait, I don't know why my video is not showing up. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll just get it. This is fine. So, whoa, I'm getting a weird audio feedback. I think. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to ask, um, were you guys, were you guys planning on um, making like more uh, visual feedback for, for the, um, for like the ball going past the hole? Yes. Because um, that seemed like a little bit unclear, um, and I was thinking you maybe think of just doing like a VFX, like how when it goes inside the water.
So, um, basically, uh, we had like, after we submitted the, the project on, um, to, to the professor, um, we, we got, we kind of got a couple of days and got feedback for, um, having more, um, feedback of the game, like point, uh, like the ball hitting the water and the lava, because we didn't have that previously. And the ball just kind of seemed it to teleport. And it was kind of weird, so we added some effects, but obviously we can't, like, we couldn't have, we couldn't, we didn't do everything, like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, so my voice thing is actually working better now. I forgot to mute Twitch, so that's why I was having a lot of like, trippy things where I was hearing my own voice after, like, like five seconds ago. <laughs> I can hear you guys now, though. yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, nice job with this. So uh, my question is, with this kind of game, the content, the puzzles, is, is really super important. Um, what do you guys do to develop these individual le levels? It looked like you have 17. Uh, did you build something so you can easily and quickly kind of make these levels and try them out? Uh, or is everything kind of like hand-coded manually? Um, so we used Tile, so we just created a spreadsheet of all our different terrains, and Tile allows us to create like multiple levels, and we could like place uh, water in like certain areas wherever we want, and we have like different layers for water, the border, the grass, um, like the different pressure plates and stuff like that. So it wasn't like uh, we coded like each level, but like Tile helped us a lot more with that. So nice, thanks. Hey guys! Hey guys! That was a fun little romp through my favorite sport ever. Uh, <laughs> it makes me it makes me wish that I could go out and play mini golf during these quarantine times. What's everybody doing in quarantine? How are you guys passing the time? Me, I've just been playing. Uh, since I'm an epic gamer, I've just been playing several video games. Anybody do anything interesting during quarantine? Any fun things? I think I've mostly just been doing school, watching Netflix, all of the... I like Pi21K says Chromatica. I'm not sure what that means, but... Me either. <laughs> Play mini golf in your apartment. You know what? That's a good idea. Oh, wait. Is that a game? Watching this... Thank you, Barums. Thank you for watching this stream. I think that's a game. All right. Speaking of games and quarantine, this next one just so happens to be called Quarantine. What is it about, you ask? I'll let them tell you. Uh, hello everyone, and this is the game Quarantine. My name is Amber Yang. I'm one of the team members on the Quarantine game. I'm Jimmy Z. I'm also another member, and uh, not present here right now is uh, Jung Uk Lee, who also helped us with, uh, build the game, so um, yeah. So, to introduce the game, Quarantine is a turn-based strategy game that has the player fighting against the spread of a disease. Um, the core gameplay of Quarantine is simple. The player spends their turn taking actions and strategizing about how to best contain the infection. After the player's turn ends, the computer simulates the results of the player's action. For example, how the virus might spread or how morale would increase or decrease based on actions taken. Um, the, the player can win by um, basically waiting out and waiting for the cure 
to reach 100%. However, the virus is not that easy to defeat, and there are several different ways that the player can lose. For example, if the entire city dies, if threat rate becomes too high, or if morale reaches zero and the people riot. So Jimmy, why don't we try leaping into a game and seeing what quarantine is all about? All right, let's go on ahead. Now we're going to start on the hardest difficulty to show you guys what happens when you, um, you know, in the worst case scenario, and we're going to start in um, New York. Um, here you can see our map, and this the map is made of um, many different uh, units or uh, tiles. And here you can see um, this square with a symbol. That's where the infection begins. Um, as you can see, uh, you can hover over um, districts and you'll see um, the statistics. Like you see, this um, this one has a uh, ten thousand uh, people and has one hundred percent morale. Um, the disease will spread different at different rates depending on which tile it um, it's in. So right now we have um, there isn't really anything we can do because we have no resources right now, as you can see up here at the top, uh, upper left. So we're going to have to um, wait and move on to the next day before we can do something. All right. Um, as you can see, we now have the next turn. Uh, we, can, we have both um, global actions as displayed on the screen right here. And if we click on a tile, we have tile specific actions. Now, global actions affect every single tile on the map, while tile actions only only um, affect singular tiles. So, in general, tile actions are usually less expensive than global actions, but as stated, they only affect one tile. So, later in the game, you might want to pr prioritize using global actions. Mm -hmm. so, um, and since we have one energy right now, I guess I'll show uh, the one thing that we can do at this moment, which is taking social distancing, which costs only one energy. Uh, keep in mind, you can also cancel that or you can reselect it however many times you want. Uh, if you cancel it, you'll get your energy back, but um, we're just going to take this action right now and move on to the next turn. And um, As you can see, each yeah. of the actions also has a little bit of a description underneath, such as plus morale minus lethality. These are different effects that your actions can have on the overall spread of the virus. Like, for example, morale is how happy the people are in that tile and affects like the rate at which it decreases or increases. There are also different virus um, effects, such as infectivity, severity, lethality, which spread the rate at which the virus rips through the um, population, as well as how it affects death. So, mm -hmm. Jimmy, what happens if we just let the virus go and infect everyone? Oh, but why would we want to do that? Why? Just to see the world burn, of course. Oh, okay. Very well. You can see the squares on the on the tiles on the map turning more and more red as uh, people become more and more infected and they um, unfortunately die. You can see it spread across the map from where it began at ground zero right here. And if we just let this happen, eventually, you see the threat level up here is increasing, and people you can see the population's morale is starting to decrease. As you can see, the certain tiles are beginning to turn black as well. This is to help reflect how many people are dead versus infected within those specific tiles. So let's continue. Uh, chat asked how much energy to buy all the toilet paper in the city. That is immeasurable. Uh, there is not a virus hoax modifier to increase the number of dead, but as we plan on further expanding upon this game, we will probably add more specific actions for tiles and different maps and such. So I think we are see, just yeah. about to lose. As you can so. see, um, the virus has <clears throat> poured through the entirety of Manhattan, so let's hope that doesn't happen in real life. Um, let's continue. All right, there goes Manhattan, I guess. And we have lost. OK. All right. So why don't we try and actually play a game of um, quarantine and see where how far we can get with the cure. 
Okay, well, let's well, uh, go to medium, and uh, shall we do London or Seoul? Why don't we talk about the maps? Um, so, what you saw just now was the basic um, map of Manhattan, which was like the basic starting map of the game. But additionally, we have the maps of London and Seoul. London adds a new mechanic that allows um, the virus to spread across bridges and across the river, and basically lets you quarantine off those bridges so it can't spread any further. Seoul adds another losing condition, which you basically have to prevent the disease from reaching the airport or else it's game over. So, Jimmy, why don't you choose Seoul? Okay. Just to make it harder for you, why not? Thank you. Um, let's take a look at where it started. Okay, it started over here on the, so uh, the southern side of, um, southern part of Seoul. And, um, if you look at this, um, the tiles, you'll see that the airport is right over here to the, the west. Now, if that gets there, we automatically lose. Now, if it had um, started at, say, in the northern and we could have just shut off the bridges and um, stopped the, from uh, getting any further. But unfortunately, we um, fate was not on our side. So Of course, we could yeah. always shut the bridges to reduce the threat level from going up and focus our efforts on the southern side. That's definitely mm -hmm. a thing we could do. Or we could try and quarantine off some tiles, if that's an option. You want to explain the quarantine um, option? The quarantine option will cost 25 energy and will basically shut down your entire, um, this tile. Nothing is getting past it. Uh, nothing is going through it. You can technically just, you can just, um, create a whole ring of these quarantine tiles and it will not spread any further. However, it costs, like I said, it's very costly and, you know, uh, you might not have that, um, you might not have enough to do it. Right now, we don't have enough to do it. So, uh, I guess, shall we take a measure or shall we move on to the next turn? We wait and see if we can get some more energy. That is a valid move to have, after all. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately for us, it seems... It hasn't spread this turn. Shall we keep going? Uh, yes, let's go. Someone asks, is there any detective work to be done when figuring out ground zero, or does the game always start with you knowing? The game always starts with you knowing. This is just for the ease of um, player experience, as well as knowing where the player can focus their efforts in the beginning game. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Shall we uh, do something or next turn? Um, why don't we see if we can get enough energy to quarantine, like the airport, the airport tiles before it reaches there. The airport tiles. Okay. Yes, because I feel like if we can eliminate that from our worry, then we can focus on the other parts. Correct. Um. Okay. Sure. So now we have twenty-five. We have twenty-five, okay. and we can quarantine off the airport. Which one shall we select? Um. Uh, any of them, I guess. Any of them. Matter. Okay. Quarantine. And then let's. It looks like it's starting to spread a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um. Yes, indeed. We have one thousand around one thousand six hundred over here and two thousand six hundred over there. That's morale. Uh, so far, it's only in these three. How's morale looking in those tiles? Um, fifty-two percent at ground zero, and mm -hmm. ninety percent in um one of the others. They're around 90%. Why don't we continue to spread it and try just try and quarantine it off until we get enough energy again. Okay, we have enough. We can start, we can try to quarantine this off now. Yep. Okay. Is there a balance as far as maybe not gaining as much energy due to how many quarantine tiles you have? No, energy is decided independently of the quarantine tiles. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm interpreting that question correctly or not. Um, and this is a single-player game. I'm not sure how you do this multiplayer, unless you had other people on the map, I suppose. Um, Jimmy, why don't you just try speeding up the cure progress a little bit with the Uh, speeding it up? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'd have to... Okay, we'd have to, um, get more energy and... boost that. Why don't you use the cheat code that we had? Oh, sure. Yeah. Alright. So... There we go. And then let's progress until we win the game. Hooray! Through some miracle, our scientists got 50%. 
um, cure rate overnight. So, that has been our game quarantine. Thank you all for watching. Thank you very much. Hello? Hello? Hello. Hi. Um, I just had a question. Um, so how does the cure gauge go up? Is that automatic for each turn? Or? Yes, it is automatic, and it goes up by a set amount every day, depending on what, um, depending on your difficulty. Oh, OK, I see. So when it's hard mode, it just goes up less. <laughs> OK, makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, I have a question. Is there a way to gain energy other than liquidity for a turn? Um, sorry, I couldn't really hear that. Is there a way to gain energy other than looking for a turn? Uh, um, yes, you can get energy back. My question was, is there a way to gain energy for the per turn? Uh, I can repeat it if you there, like. If there are other ways to gain energy other than per turn. Oh, you can get energy back from lifting quarantine in certain areas, or um, say, uh, it, um, lifting a blockade on a bridge. Um, those would be ways of getting them back if you've, but those are things that, uh, measures that you've already taken in previous turns. So you'd be getting them back. Um, we have a question in the chat that says, um, what are the rules of the spread of the virus? Um, I'm not sure if you're asking about the virus algorithm itself, but basically the way it works is that um, every turn, if the amount of infected people exceeds a certain percentage based on the difficulty, it spread, it checks to see if it, it like checks the random number based on the current virus stats and sees if it spreads to an adjacent tile. And if it does, then it puts a random amount of infected people in that tile. Hey everyone, welcome back. Hello. Thank you, quarantine team, for having a game with a Q. I love the letter Q. <laughs> now, Liz, I just wanted to take a quick break and tell you a couple of jokes that I've been dying to get your opinion of. Oh, jokes I... that I've heard ten times already? No, these are new jokes. <laughs> new jokes that were definitely not you. have a lot you. of sheep jokes. Okay, here's my first joke that you did not know was about sheep yet. No. <laughs> what do you call... A dog that chases sheep. A shepherd dog. <laughs> That's a good guess. That's a good guess. Anyone in the chat know? Well, the answer is a bad dog. <laughs> Nailed it. All right, one more. One, one, one more. One more question. One more joke. Then we're, I'll tell you. All one. right. One more. What do dogs hate most about sheep? Um, maybe they hate the fact that they eat all the food. It's a good guess. It's a good guess. What dogs hate most about sheep is that they have fleece. <laughs> Get it? Because it sounds like Thank fleas. You. That was a new one. I know. I, I <laughs> came up with that one right there. I also came up with the other one, too. <laughs> anyway, why am I telling you about sheep? Because our next game just so happens to be about sheep. What is it called, Liz? Do you know? 
It's called Sheer Madness. <laughs> Don't give me those Fs in the chat. All right, we're going. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Sheer Madness. It's a game where you herd sheep. I am Spencer. I'm Norman. I'm Billy. And first we're going to try the first level. So this first level is basically just an introduction to the game where you just have to get the sheep to the finish. And this second level introduces the mechanics of water. If you, if you, the dog, or the sheep get into the water, like the, both of you drown, like nothing can swim in this world. And if you, the dog like drowns, it's just like the, dog, the level ends. And in this level, we, we are trying to introduce the mechanic of lasso, which can help you make precise movements, so ignoring like the slight randomness of the sheep. But while you're lassoing a sheep, you, you and the sheep move slower. Ah. Here's another word of lasso. And in this level, we introduce the, the, the wolves, which are another obstacle. The wolves can like eat you or the sheep. And this level introduces the, um, it tells the layer to use the parking pack, which can move away from the current distance that's larger than like the, larger than the, than the radius for herding. And as you notice, the wolf was chasing the sheep. So in this level is where the difficulty goes up. So in this level, it takes advantage of the parking cutting and how you can you control the food moving from a shorter distance, distance away. away. So in this level, you have to guide the sheep through the maze using a pop mechanic. There's a lot of going on. Let's move on. Let me skip that level. Ah. We're back now. So in this level, it's similar to level three, where it you like a narrow strip of water, but in this level we also add the wolves, which supposedly uh, control back and forth, making it difficult. Advantage of the uh, rock mechanic as well. But there is a bit of a caveat where the rock range is limited. And if you were to uh, just play or you park, you're not going to be able to um, hurt all the Talk about spot final level. Yeah, this is kind of like where we put it all together. 
Uh, and, you know, we're just trying to show the possibilities. <laughs> <with this. laughs> So, yeah, the link that was mentioned that is the correct link. So, like Spencer, uh, who was who was who voiced the sheep? I'm kidding. Oh, the, the sheep was voiced by my dad. Yeah, I just have a question about the wolves. It wasn't clear to me what they're supposed to do. Um, is it more out of it than it was for me? Is that, was that intended? Or was that a bug? I couldn't hear you at all. Oh, can you hear me now? No, I still can't hear you. I heard some static. Uh, let me... Is that better? I was a little confused about the the polls are supposed to do. Uh, they think I'm supposed to be. Just, I still can't hear you. Uh, can you type? Okay, so I'm going to go up front and say, um, there seems to be a, a a bug in our in the deployed version, um, but we are going to fix that pretty soon. The wolves they they patrol. And once they see a sheep nearby, they chase them. Hey everyone! Hello again. So it's getting dark over this. here. What? It's getting dark on my end. Ah, is it getting late? It's only seven. All right. All right. We still got time. Daylight. Daylight hours. I'd like so... to point out that all the Fs in the chat to my sheep joke was for fleece. <laughs> anyway. So um, we have a Mad Lib prepared for this next bit. Yes. Uh, we're gonna need some. We're going to need some words from the audience. So first, I need an adjective. Will you grab an adjective from the audience? And then Let's I see. Anybody got any good here? adjectives? I'm a big fan of the word tender. <laughs> I see smelly. I see fluffy. I see spicy. Uh, you got to pick one. Let's go, let's go with smelly. OK. So next is a noun. All right. What, any quick. nouns? Any nouns in there? Swood? Is that a noun? I, pe people might still be hearing. I adjective. see cookie, I see wolf, I see sheep. Go, All right. go do sheep. All right, sheep. All right, noun again. A noun again? Yeah, just give me noun? one of the other ones. All right, let's go with cookie. All right, and then give me a verb. A verb? Any verbs out there? McKenna is not a verb, guys. <laughs> But he is a noun, so maybe we'll get we'll get him for that. Run. Eat. I see run. Okay, we're going with run. Uh adverb. Adverbs. 
Castigate? No. <laughs> <laughs> Flying. Uh, here, quickly. I see quickly. Uh, okay, so verb ending in ing. A verb ending ing. If we go up, I see grading. I see flying. Okay, Pick so on. I'll put flying. All right. And then do adjective. Another adjective, guys. Any adjectives? And then a plural noun is the last one. Red, sparkly, soft. All right, I'm p putting red. And then give me a plural noun. Do Makilla gorillas. I'm going to add this one. All right, Michaela Grillas. <laughs> what did we, okay, what did we uh, end so, up with? Uh, we ended up with Stony Brook University is a smelly sheep where cook cookies can run while quickly flying to be red Michaela Grillas. <laughs> it's something. Phenomenal effort, guys. <laughs> All right. But what does this have to do with the next game, Liz? Well, in the next game, I guess... I don't want to explain the game, but... That's a good idea. I guess you'll find out in Source yeah, Code. Yeah, you'll find out. <laughs> Let's go there now. Hello everyone, my name is Aiden, and my uh, teammates Max and Sam, are, uh, together we made a game called Source Code. So, without uh, further ado, let's start. So, in Source Code you play as this small blue man uh, named Nort. Uh, Nort's world's changed recently, something deep in the world is causing disturbances. Nort is kind of special, however. He can see the holes in the fabric of reality and the, disturb uh, the disturbances cre have created and fix them by solving puzzles. So without, uh, without actually doing anything, uh, you can see you have the controls given to you uh, in these rifts around here. And then uh, one appears to be missing something. Without actually tossing this in, you can't jump. But when you go over, and throw it, you can jump. And as you solve these things, they close and sort of heal the world. So we can do a lot of different things with uh, these rifts. We can change gravity, like so. platforming here. We could change the um the actual uh collision layer. So in uh, each level, there's uh, it sort of adds an additional thing, and then we have these levels like this where they sort of all come together. 
you can see that um, rifts that uh, can't take certain kinds of input, they just reject it. You can uh, we actually set the uh, the drag so he no longer he's basically just skating on the world. Yeah, here we can't really get through to that uh, the other bit, so we can't really get up there. But once you fill in that first one, you can go like this. and then undo the slipperiness. Some of the levels we've left uh, little treasures for North to find. I've just been going through the game so far, but say you want to go back a little. You can go back and select a level which you selected before, and it reloads the status of the uh, of how Nort should be in that level. So as you get, uh, go through the levels, you gain more and more abilities, and these abilities are then um, they stack on each other. Space for jump, yes. <laughs> so a lot of these levels are. Uh... Flat, just platforming and solving simple puzzles, you know, to uh, get the player used to what's to come. see uh, actually filling in one creates another. And here we get a glimpse of the thing that's been causing the problems with the world. I don't really want to 
you can hear this, but if I do, let's see what happens. Ooh. Yeah, North doesn't like that. Now got a chance. Go. And here we get to our final level. And this thing actually starts creating rifts of its own. And uh, by using the rifts and fixing them as they appear, you can actually uh, beat this thing out. <laughs> uh oh. And finally, we take it out. <laughs> source code. Thank you very much, everyone. All right. Hello. Hi. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering. It looked like you said that you were able to go back to previous levels with things you unlocked in the later levels. Uh, no. You, uh, if you want to go back to the previous levels, it undoes your progress, so you can uh, play that level like you played it the first time. Oh, I see. Okay, because it looked like you were saying that, like, if you solved the crouch level, then you could go back to an earlier level with the crouch power up. Yeah, that would probably be uh, pretty powerful. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of curious uh, what kind of what other rules you guys were thinking of implementing, and uh, you know, things that you were hoping to put into. Uh, later iterations of this game. Well, with the um, with the mechanic as it is, we can basically take anything in the um, the game world and change it. We just uh, didn't really get a chance to. So, um, as to your question, uh, I, I would want to implement um, more, like maybe moving platforms or uh, just uh, maybe more more sections where you can. Um, do the, uh, the the multiple rifts thing where you input one rift and it, it makes another appear, which has another effect, and it just chains along. I had a question. Um, so we saw that the giant snake kind of gave damage to the player. The player turned purple. Can the player die in this game? Not at the moment, no. <laughs> okay. Really cool concept, though. Thank you. All right.
Hey guys. Hello again. And <laughs> hey. So I heard you were gonna get a new 3D platformer. Yes, yes, I'm in the market. I've exhausted all of my uh, 3D platformers, like the classic Bubsy 3D. You should pull the chat. Hey, does the chat have any good suggestions for 3D platformers for an epic gamer such as myself? I'm looking for something challenging, but fun. Croc 2? What's Croc 2? <laughs> Bubsy 3D is chill. Thank you. Somebody gets it. <laughs> A lot of people are wow. commenting. <laughs> <laughs> Who is, uh, what is Speedbot? I've never heard of it. Ooh, Ninja Bread, man. Crazy. Banjo-Kazooie fans? Oh, Banjo-Kazooie fans. Unite, please. Battle for Bikini Bottom, I rehydrated. All right, well, I'm <laughs> I'm very interested in the this is Speedbot. If only I could see some gameplay of Speedbot so I could determine whether or not to buy it. Oh, darn. What do you think, Liz? I think that we should head to the next presentation because oh, I think I, don't, I hear. I don't see how that's going to help scoop. me. I don't see how <laughs> I don't see that's going to help me buy Speedbot, but I guess we'll go. All right. Uh, hello again, everyone. Um, for those who missed my earlier presentation, my name is Daniel, and I am a senior that recently graduated last week. Uh, I majored in computer science, and I specialize in game programming. Um, so yeah, welcome to Speedbot. Uh, before I get into the game, I actually want to talk about how I came up with this game. So I've always been a huge fan of speedruns, of watching speedruns. Um, Especially speedruns that involve um, a lot of details in intricate movements, and uh, I guess that's where most of the skill disparity came from, like how players moved. So essentially what I wanted to make was a game that put heavy emphasis on movement and, well, speed. So in this game, there are a total of four levels, um, and yeah, I'll just get right into it. So the way you move is you look around with your mouse, you use WASD to move, um, and then you press space to jump. Uh, other than that, you, if you press shift, you can toggle it so that you're running. And then if you press space twice, you'll double jump. So I'm just going to kind of go through the tutorial here. Um, you can see that there's a big wall here and our character isn't actually small enough to fit in it. But if you press control, you'll actually perform a roll. Now we're stuck and we have nowhere else to go. But one cool thing that I made in this game is if you right click and then you left click a building, there's a tether, which is basically a laser that connects you to that building. And then if you reel in with your mouse wheel, it basically brings you to that building, to that location. So um, yeah, that's the gist of the controls. Um, now we're gonna get into power-ups. So these yellow capsules are essentially double jump resets. So if you come into contact with one of them, like that, uh, you can see I just failed here. So if, it, if you press R, you could actually respawn back to your last checkpoint, which was this one. Um, so yeah, if you collect these capsules, you essentially earn a double jump. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you'll get in this platform, and then these purple capsules give you an increase in movement speed. So if you collect one, it gives you a temporary speed boost, and you could actually use the speed boost to jump or traverse through bigger platforms like that one. And now for the final part of the tutorial, it's just a mini, I guess, uh, level of this tutorial. Um, just complete it as fast as you can um, using what using everything that you've learned for these past few minutes 
and yeah that's for the tutorial and if you see that little or not little but like this tall tower at the end of the stage that's actually the end of the level so if you trigger it then it basically finishes the level so yeah now we'll move on to the game um so before i get into the game i actually want to talk about a little bit about the story so what i essentially made was um if you guys have ever read uh, 1984 it's basically about uh, a big figure that's um pretty much sp spreading propaganda to its citizens but okay i'll just get into the story so basically there's this leader um r19 and he made machines that closely 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 resemble his ideal citizen but there was one machine that broke free from its programming and this machine's name is b055 um and what he intends to do is escape the city before the utopia that uh the leader created turns into a dystopia so if we progress through this is what the first level looks like so right off the bat um there's an introduction of a platform a moving platform and then you basically just have to traverse through this entire level while uh, going through these checkpoints um and if you look above me okay well you can't actually see it right now um okay so right above me is one of the the creations of the leader that's basically shooting bullets at you and it's trying to stop you from escaping so if you i'll just demonstrate here if you get hit by it you'll kind of move a little bit so you want to try your best to avoid that and then yeah so just yeah i'm just trying to complete this level at this point um as fast as I can because this is uh, intended at least what I had thought of, thought of um, to be speedrun so just traversing through the level as fast as possible is your main goal um, yeah and then right here you can see these platforms you don't actually have a ground so you have to try your best to accurately shoot these targets and then reel into them so that you can move on uh, with the level so yeah, that's the first level. This is the second level. Um, so you can see here, there's two pathways. There's this one right here, and then there's this building right here. So oftentimes speedrunners will uh, try to find the best and fastest solution to get to their destination, even though it may be risky. And that's essentially what I created here. So um, I'll just demonstrate this, this fast version first. Um, so what you want to do is collect Okay, no, not like that. So what you want to do is collect these, I guess, purple capsule so that you could in get a increase in movement speed and then use these capsules to basically get to that platform, which I just failed to. But that's actually, that's essentially the fastest way. Um, but there's also the safe way, which is uh, going through this building, uh, getting the checkpoint here, and then traversing through these platforms, which is a bit slower, but it's a lot uh, safer than the one I just... Uh, demonstrated and then once you're here you reel into this building um, go up these flight of stairs until you reach the next checkpoint which is over here and then you would wheel into this building jump and then hop on to this building with that speed boost and then use these buildings to reel up to the top like so and yeah that's the second level for the third level uh you can see that the atmosphere is a bit darker now it's actually night and then once you go up these buildings you can see that there's a flock of enemies that are actively just trying to shoot you um the ai in this game is currently a bit wonky they're targeting your current position instead of like your anticipated location but yeah i thought it would just be simplified for for now um once you pass that you can get to this building where it hops you and goes you through the next checkpoint now this um for this section what i 
what I had originally intended to do was you shoot through these platforms, and then after each platform, you shoot the next one, and then you basically repeat the process. But what I had found is you could basically just shoot the top and then go on the next one by jumping on it. And this is essentially a safer way of doing it. It's not what I intended to do, but I guess that comes with every game that gets speedrun is that people find exploits. And I guess I found one of them like by accident. So <clears throat> yeah, this is how you traverse through this level. And you basically just get to the, the finish line. <clears throat> now for the last level, this is actually my favorite level. Um, just because of the, the sheer difficulty that it brings uh, to the game. Um, which I'll explain in a brief moment. But for now, you just want to get through these enemies and go to the next checkpoint right here. And you can see right in front of me is a bunch of moving platforms that will push you. If you collide with them, so you want to try your best not to come into contact with them, like what I just did. Yeah. And then once you're here, you can see that there's a speed boost here, but the jump over there is kind of long. So a cool mechanic that I wanted to introduce to this game is once you get the speed boost, you immediately, I guess, flick your mouse to the target location that you want to go to. So, if I show this... Okay, not like that. <laughs> Alright, so... Let's do that again. Like that. So, it really involves a lot of... I guess... Precise movement with your... With your mouse. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna... Traverse through this level. Like normal. And then for this, there's a big building that you really have to go up to. Um, yeah, you just want to keep on clicking until you reach the checkpoint. And then this is the hardest part of the, the level, which is basically going up these flight of stairs. Yeah. All right. So yeah, um, that's basically the game. Um, once you get through that level, that's basically down the level. You just want to reach that point. And yeah. So that's it for Speedbot. Thank you. Hey, can you guys hear me? Excellent. Um, first off, awesome job on the game. It looks really good. Um, I just had a question about the um, mouse wheel mechanic. Like, why do you, like, traditional graphic hook, right? You just kind of point, aim, and it drags you kind of at, like the same speed. Why did you choose the mouse wheel mechanic? So I actually based this game off of a game I used to play online it's pretty funny um there's this game this is uh if you've ever watched attack on titan there was this tribute game they made online where you would basically shoot a hook a hook with a right click and then you would reel in using the mouse wheel and i just found that mechanic pretty cool because it's not your standard oh just shoot at this target and then you immediately go to that target players have the versatility of like choosing when to reel so maybe if they shoot a target they don't want to uh, reel in yet maybe they just want to traverse through several platforms before they reel in. So it's just kind of a fun little option that I wanted to introduce. Cool. Um, other question I had was you showed like the enemies shooting bullets at you to kind of throw you off course, um, but you don't actually take damage. Um, was that like an intentional choice or? Um, yeah, there's, there's, no, yeah. There's, no, there's no health bars in this game. Um, I just wanted the enemies to kind of just uh, push you back or knock you back a little bit so that if you were trying to traverse the level, they would essentially be a nuisance to you. Um, but yeah, there's no, there's no health mechanic in this game at all. Um, that's not what I intended to do. So, yeah. Cool. Um, also, I noticed like the platforms, the platforms themselves are floating, um, but you have kind of buildings in the background. Was there any thought to like maybe making the platforms like the tops of buildings or making the environment a little more complex? <laughs> yeah, so I'm not the best when it comes to level design. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I kind of just made, every, yeah, I just, I just kind of made every level like, in a way, be able to get past past through it. Um, yeah, I wanted to add background. I wanted to add scenery. I wanted to add uh, more complex like platforms, more complex buildings. But you know, like I'm, I'm not the best console level design, so that's the best I could come up with at this moment in time. No, totally fine. But did a really good job. All right, thank you. Hey everyone. Hello again. You know, all this uh, this whole Stony Brook game competition has got me thinking about Stony Brook University. It was a shame that the year ended so quickly, and I've just been imagining what it must be like without us these days. What do you think, Liz? What do you think is going on in Stony Brook University? I'm thinking that it's been overrun by zombie geese. That's my guess. It had to be geese, didn't it? You just had to go yes. there. Zombie well, geese. McKenna, Professor McKenna said that there was no people on campus, so I figured that it can't be real zombies or it's like people's zombies. So it's got to be true. zombie geese. The ge and it would be the geese that would take over the campus. Those monsters. Anyway, I've been told that our next game is actually a very accurate, highly painstakingly crafted simulation of what Stony Brook <laughs> University is like right now. So why don't we just go there and get a glimpse of our beloved university. Anyway, the game is called StarCraft. excellent idea for a game. Uh, <laughs> so the control here, it's, it's, StarCraft is really mostly a, a top-down shooter. Um, you're going to move with WASD. You have a sprint option with the L button. No mouse controls. Uh, you attack, interact, and cycle between two weapons. So we'll be sure to show that all off. As you can see, we have some locked levels. So I'm just going to go into level one. And um, you'll see we have two different enemy types right away. This one is the most simple one. He sort of just he sort of just walks uh, in random directions. He's a sort of amalgus poop thing. Um, and then these guys patrol between different points. And actually, once you hit them, um, they're going to start chasing you. So I'll show that off. So you can see he's chasing me now. And uh, he can be a problem. He's going to hurt me. Um, so yeah, Alex actually made all of the tile sets for our level. So Alex, what, what's the idea behind this level? Okay, so this level is, well, it's obviously outside. It's mainly based, uh, it's supposed to be the general, just like Stony Brook campus. Obviously, it's not based on like any specific layout of the campus. I think it's just meant to be, it's meant to represent a campus is what it's meant to represent. And as you can see, the, you know, there's flowers that you can walk through. The bushes you can't walk through. They're one of the obstacles, as well as fences, as well as all the buildings. And when developing this, we weren't sure exactly how to make the buildings show up, like that they were off the ground. And then eventually we had the idea of adding the shadows. And I think that uh, worked out really well. It really helps give a sense of depth. Yeah, so you can see that we have two different types of attacks. I have a ranged attack, 
Um, that's using my plunger gun, basically, so you can see me shooting it. I had a little animation for it. And then I can switch weapons. There's also an animation for that. It's a broom attack. It's like a more melee type weapon. And uh, it's actually going to do a little more damage, but obviously it puts you more in harm's way. Um, each level has a different objective. So level one is really just to de defeat all the enemies on the map. So this is the last one. So I'll just defeat him real quick and we'll go in level two and show you what's new with that. So you can see a level complete screen, replay level, return to menu. We're going to level two. Uh, so Alex, why don't you tell us about, about this level? I think Alex DC'd. Oh, um, Alex DC'd. <laughs> oh, he's back. Hello, Alex. Alex would you like to describe the idea behind it. this? Uh, this level, this level is uh, it's just meant to be like a general study, study hall or a uh, classroom type area. As you can see, there's desks, which again are removable objects. Now there's potted plants and trash cans. Um, but yeah, it's just meant to be a general like school like layout. There's nothing too specific about this one in particular. But it is a little bit more open than uh, the, the later indoor classroom themed levels. Make, makes it a little bit easier for the player before they get to the more difficult levels later on. Yeah, and you'll see that the objective for this level has changed. It's now to um, clog some of the toilets. You can see in the, uh, the top right of the screen we have an objective counter. And so this is the last one. So we didn't really have to fight anything in that level. Just had to clear out all the toilets. Um, so each level we have something new to it. Um, this one is really like the gym, I guess, right, Alex? Uh, yeah, this one's just meant to be a gym. It uh, combines the inside and the outside tiles, as well as introduces new tiles like basketballs and the weights. Um, yeah, for, we, the object, we changed the objective, so when you switch inside, because when it makes, we, did, we figured it wouldn't make sense for like the outside levels to, uh, to have the toilets, so that's the reason we have the uh, switching objectives. Probably yeah, can. so there's actually a new enemy type in this one, which is it's sort of like a mimic type character that's going to uh, disguise itself as a toilet and attack you when you try to get to it. So you can see he just did that. So uh, he's not very nice. Um, so I'm just going to leave him alone in the interest of time. Um, so he's he's really cool because he can tr sort of trick you into um, thinking that you're safe, but you're not, which is which is always fun to do to your players. Um, got a lot of good reactions from him during playtest. Um, so yeah, I, I might just use a nice level sheet to go to the next level um, in the interest of time. So this one's level four. Um, yeah, this is like, all, uh, yeah, it's like a lecture hall or something, about, right? Yeah, it's just meant to be a lecture hall. I kind of based it on like, a, on like Javits where it's, <laughs> The lecture halls are all off in like the sides, and then there's like the big center area that connects all the lecture halls. And as you can notice in this level, the uh, like the hallways and stuff between like the desks and everything are a lot more narrow as they were than they were in level two. So it makes it a little bit more challenging for the player to navigate and get around in the classrooms themselves. Yeah, and so you can uh, see there's another new enemy type here. Um, Andy actually really did most of this one, so why don't you uh -oh. tell us about that? For this enemy type, it's the henchman. So this is one of the professor's minions where once you get in a certain range, he'll start attacking you through range attacks and then he'll chase you if you get even closer. Um, when his health reaches a certain percent, he will create a shield around him that is invisible and not take damage for a certain period of time while he summons poops. Right. Um, yeah, so I, I might skip this level two because we really want to get to uh, the cool boss battles that we have. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> so this is level five. Um, so you can see now that there's a, a health bar at the bottom for a, a boss battle. Uh, the Poofester and McKenna. And then in the top right we have defeat the Poofester. So it's clear that, you know, there's something waiting here for us that uh, is more sinister than what we've encountered before. Um, here he is. So this is like a, the first boss battle of our game up. Andy, why don't you tell us about, about the boss battle? So Poofesser, he is a mage slash summoner. He is the mastermind behind the scoop invasion. Uh, if you get too close to him, well, originally he will shoot like just like the henchman, but his boats are big, are bigger and a bit faster. If you get too close, he'll start running away from you. Uh, I believe once he gets to a certain amount, he'll also start spawning uh, who demons, who monsters. Yeah, as you can see right there, he just, just spawned a bunch. Oh man, he's pretty tough. 
que he's almost done the. Oh no, he's, these guys are blocking me. Don't die now. <laughs> Try not to. If, uh, I based this level off, uh, well, the first half of it was based off the new CS building in terms of like layout, but then. Oh, well. But oh, then, I, uh, I died, but let's pretend like I won. And we'll go let's to the pretend final that level. he won. Yeah, that <laughs> level's basically based on the new CS building. And then this is the final level where uh, you're now in the poo dimension. And as you can see, everything's made out of poo, the floor, the walls, everything's poo. And uh, now you have to defeat Professor McKenna in his ultimate form, the McKilla Gorilla, and which Andy did most of the work on, so we could talk about that. Uh, for the Makila Gorilla, he is the transformed version of the Professor. He will start attacking at range um, and also try to charge at you or jump at you at random. When his health reaches a certain level or a certain percentage, he will grow in size along with the bullets he shoot and spawn two demons. Yeah. I, you know, I promise I usually beat this guy. It is a little, it is a little laggy when I'm trying to share on my laptop. <laughs> that, that'll fool him, right, guys? I, I definitely always win, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh, you totally did. So you can see what's really interesting about this guy is that um, sort of as as we keep damaging him, he's going to get bigger and bigger and obviously spawn more guys. And right now he's really big, so he's, he's really a, a big menace and he's jumping all around and uh, it's really a pain to deal with. I think I'm... Oh, I almost got him there. I swear, he's close. scared of me, I think. Oh, I beat him. So that's nice. game complete. Congratulations, you defeated Makila Gorilla, the ultimate life form. Um, so that's really that's really the end of the game. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, yep. yeah. Thank you. Uh, hi. Uh, just want to say, great work in that game. I love it. Uh, oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I, I, just, I just want to know, uh, what does this have to do with StarCraft? Because I'm assuming that's the main thing. <laughs> so that's actually a great question. Um, yeah, it's sort of a bait and switch, isn't it? Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, the name StarCraft came, we basically, when coming up for the concept for the game, we had so many different concepts, and we couldn't, we had, were having trouble landing on one particular one. And so eventually Professor McKenna forced us into picking, committing to something, and he essentially gave us the name StarCraft. And we're like, this is great. <laughs> Give us the direction to take our game. Let's go with it. Yeah, it was, it was all McKenna's doing. Yeah, you can blame him. So he is the sole person responsible for the concept of StarCraft. He, the, the, yes. world, the world concept essentially is. <laughs> that, that's good to know. Thank you. No problem. Wow. Hey, guys. Stony Brook has really gone downhill in our absence. In fact, I think Professor McKenna, since he, is the, he has told me he's the only one there, I think he's just finally cracked and overtaken the entire <laughs> school. Anyway, this, this Well. <laughs> that was horrifying. How uh, about we tell some n more jokes to lighten the mood? So, oh boy, you're gonna tell jokes too? Yep, but I'm I didn't looking, make them myself. I'm taking I, them straight from the internet. As I look directly at you, I hope. I think. Yep. Okay. Awesome. All right. So, first one. Why were the Middle Ages called the Dark Ages? Because 
they were in the middle, so they were squished by stuff and it made the light. That's my guess. Because there were too many knights. <laughs> wow. I get it. Knights with and a K. And <laughs> ready for the next one? Great. I'm ready. Hit me. I'll get this one. <laughs> what do you call a candle in armor? A candle in armor? A fire squire. <laughs> yeah? I like that one. <laughs> it's called a nightlight. <laughs> uh, no, no, I think it's called a fire. <laughs> All right, one more, one last one. All right, well, last one. So, what do you call a knight in a cannibal village? Lunch. <laughs> Canned food. <laughs> I get it, cause, 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 cause they're wearing suits of armor, and it's like a can. <laughs> Great goat. All right, why did you tell all those knight jokes? Because the next game is all about knights. Two of them. Wow. Specifically two of them. It's a multiplayer game. It's going to be great. Then I hope we are treated well. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, this is uh, this is Shilong. We're making uh, the game called The Bird Between Nights. This is a two D uh, puzzle platformer. Uh, it's a game for uh, it's a puzzle game that's uh, have two characters. You want you guys want to introduce yourself? Oh, hello. This is Rengie. Uh Hi, this is Andrew. And uh, just like uh, there's a problem with our music, so later, so when we're playing the game, maybe just like uh, there's some voice that might be like too loud, so be careful with your ear. Cool. Yeah, that's it. Okay. All right. Then you keep to start and play. This is level one. As you can see, we have two characters. Uh, and uh, uh, the top one is controlled by, by the the four arrow key. Actually, uh, up, down, and then left and right, and the bottom one is controlled by WSD. So uh, the all the uh, all the controls in in the main menu, you can take a look at it. And once you've started, uh, you have to uh, have both characters to reach uh, to get the key in order to get into the next level, pretty much. And uh, the next one, you have two characters as well. Uh, this game, this level is kind of like you need to solve the puzzle by looking at the, the pattern of the window to try to figure it out a little bit. The order of uh, the pressure play has to be um, pressed like in the correct order in order to retrieve the key. Next level, uh, next level requires some teamwork. Actually, I need two, uh, need a two player to, to uh, press the pressure plate at the same time. Oh, rip! It's kind of hard to control. Okay. Okay. Get a get a key right there. This, uh, you can play this game as only ourselves, but uh, you can also uh, have a friend to join you, actually. Fun, though. Uh, yep, that's it. I mean, the red keys only work for the, the right knight, the blue keys only for the blue knight, so... Uh, yeah. the next level, you're, uh... For this level, yeah. it's like, yeah. it's similar to, like, using a key. You can see that just that when, by walking, like, where's the demon, the red knight can only kill the red. Demon, while the blue knight only kill the blue demon. But the dark demon, which is the black one, you cannot beat it. It's just like you cannot beat it. It's unbeatable. Uh, so you basically just have to like 
try to like go around and it's go around and try like, to escape these enemies and try to get a key without oh, yeah, just like without being attacked. I'm stuck at this game. <laughs> Here we go. The right one goes to right, but uh, it requires the blue one to clear the the demon first for him. <coughs> and I want to go to the left. Okay. Yeah, so this one is basically the same mechanics, but I just like, introduced more demons, and, like they'll move more faster. But I tried to make this like a hardcore level, so just like, you basically have to be careful with your steps. Try not to like go into the de demon. So, as the difficulty increases, this level has more mechanics we want to introduce. Oh, so for these two levels, uh, we add uh, two cannons. One fires fireball and one fires uh, bubbles. When the knights touch the fireball, uh, he, will die, he will die. But when the knights touches the bubbles, he will actually be, bubble, uh, be trapped in bubbles and keep going up. The only way to save the blue knights from the bubbles is for the red knights to step on the red button. Then you will fire, uh, then you will shoot a, a a trap over here. That's the only way you can save the blue knights. But if the right knights uh, trigger the trigger the trap when the blue knight is not in the bubble, uh, the blue knight will die. So you need to dodge every every trap in order to get a key. And for the next level, uh, it's harder to find find out a mechanism because I switched the position of the key. So the players will actually need to think about uh, how to get the blue keys down there, downstairs, and how to get the red, uh, red key up to for the red knights get it. So here, if the red knights, if the red knights can go up and re uh, and push the blue keys down. The blue knights will be able to collect it. Uh, Jack, can you move the red knights to <laughs> push I, the... I'm so bad at this game, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, oh, so... I gotta... That again. Well, you, you can you can touch Rip. the laser there. Rip. Alright, uh... Oh, okay. That's... Yeah, let's try to figure it out first. Ah. Uh, uh, here's really? a couple trap. <laughs> okay. And then you push ah. the blue key down. Oh no. <laughs> Not again, really. Need to be careful with these traps. To push more, to push more. Ah, uh, red. <laughs> so for the red key to going up, you need to actually push the red key to the uh, bottom and let the cannon hit the red key, yeah. so the red key will be bubbled. And it will follow up, and so the red knight could uh, collect the red key. Let's see how Jack do it. Yeah. 
yeah, so that's for now all about our games. <coughs> and thank, thank you, you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. You guys, how's it going? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 Hello. Um, I'm just curious, how did you guys start coming up with the mechanics for the puzzles? Is it an iterative process or did you have them all up front? Uh, for each of us, we designed two levels. So I guess we just come up with our own ideas for our two levels and uh, then implement by ourselves. <laughs> yeah, so basically, like, we try to, like, we have a test play beforehand, like every just the, the other students would try to play the game and tell us like what they want, what they think what that was most fun. So each of us like take part of that and try to like implement it in our own ways. So we just like design all these like all these like levels based on all those like comments and also like our ideas. Gotcha. Very cool. Um one of the questions come up. Uh why did you guys decide to go with multiplayer, two players on the one on the one keyboard? Yeah, so so we just like we try to like first we just like brainstorm like tons of ideas first. But slowly like we tried like we talk about one game was like called the Fire Boy and the Water Girl. Like we try to like think about like maybe you could play a game that's similar like that because like sometimes you want to like play with your friends. So like you could play a game like single player and, and multiple player. So it would be much fun. Like you would have like more fun. You could enjoy it more. Gotcha. Yeah, and another thing that came to my mind was um you know. One one player controlling two sprites, uh, kind of think like a, a trying kind of thing where you, you know, switch between a couple different characters, um, may may give them a similar effect, uh, with with a little less dexterity element involved in it. But uh, that's all I got. Thank you very much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey everyone, so Hello. thank you for sticking with us this long. I know it's been a very long uh, competition so far. We've only got one more game though. It's the last one, home stretch, everyone. Yeah, so uh, before that game, I was just wondering, what do you guys think will end the world? I mean, that's a good question. since 2020 has been so crazy, there are a lot of options. <laughs> presenting themselves currently. So what does the chat think it's going to end the world? I think what's going to happen is the sun is going to explode, but miss the earth by a near margin, and then the earth is going to succumb to disease. <laughs> Someone we'll in the see... chat said aliens. aliens. <laughs> Someone said red pekilla gorillas. Someone said poop bees. I wonder how that's going to happen. I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> well, it's a good thing we're ending this uh, competition with the end of the world. Because it just so happens that the next game is called World Ender. So we're going to head on over there right now. Thanks, guys.
Okay. So here's the game World Ender. Um, it's about uh, well, the theme of the game is um, well, the type of game it is is like think of a cross between Breakout and RPG elements. So from the start, uh, we're at the main menu. So what we can do is we can choose between each of the four characters presented. So these are starting characters. So would you hover over some of the characters? Okay, so the there's one. This one. This one's the Lich. So each of them has HP, attack, and um, a passive skill and an active skill. So a passive skill will always be active during the game, and then the active skill will be um, something that you use by pressing a key. Uh, and then we can look through other ones. So the Slime King's like really tanky, and the Lich King has like extra lives. The Possessed Sword has pretty high damage if you hit enough enemies. The Fire Dragon has cool skills. So let's just start with the Fire Dragon. So right now, so we're seeing like this is basically breakout. You use uh use the character you bounce the character around to deal damage. When the character hits someone, they deal their dam their attack damage to the enemy, and they can also get hit by the enemy projectiles. Um, also, they have yeah. skill. <laughs> Which okay, is, so some uh, yeah. on the right side, you can see the skill bar. Um, there's a cooldown, and it's represented by the black um, square going down. Uh, when you use this skill, it goes on cooldown. Um, you can also see the health bar on the right side. Um, okay, so now we've cleared the stage, so now you can choose an upgrade. So for the dragon, you can either lower the cooldown, change the, increase the number of the dragon spirits that float around her that deal damage, or increase the damage of the burn damage that gets inflicted when you hit the enemy. So we should go with, let's go with the increased number of dragon spirits. Because, okay, so now there's a second fire circle yeah, and, around. And uh, in this level, we introduced the shield knight, which are the, those knights in front. And when you hit them in the front, there's this like yellow shimmer that, uh, that signals that they can't be damaged from the front. Um, so what you have to do here is you have to hit them from the side or, or just burn them with uh, the, the fire damage. Which is not yeah. blocked. Yeah. James, you could sk skip this level. So we, we this is a cheat. We're, we're cheating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just stack. Let's just stack the dragon spirits for now. Okay. So this is a mini boss. Um, so mini bosses are. Are. Hello. Hello. Are you saying something? Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, uh, I lagged. Um, so many bosses, they have like a special mechanic, and um, uh, the unit we use, like the model, the, some of the mechanics, we use them later for like normal enemies. So this this specific wizard is a mini boss, and also, as you can see, when you kill him, he splits into like extra wizards, and he eventually he runs out of lives, but you have to kill all his uh, little minions. Um, I skip. And then when you finish this level, um, so we wanted to make mini bosses special. So there's like a special upgrade for being a mini boss, and they generally uh, affect the way you play. Um, so for for the fire character, um, she has two like special upgrades, and uh, one increases the radius of the fire spirits. The second one uh, it makes your active better. So James, just pick one. Just, let's just pick the radius one. Okay, so now the radius of her flames is a lot higher, and the flames are also a little bit bigger, so they hit more enemies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then now we see that the one. um the mini boss recurs here. So now he shows up as a normal earth mage that shoots this, and he doesn't have lives anymore. But then if you yeah. um we don't have a character that does it, but if you do high enough damage okay. on um when you contact the wizard, he takes okay. uh, he teleports away, so that you have to find him again. Yeah. James, just uh, skip this okay, one. We can just skip this one also. Yeah. There's like 15 levels. Okay. And since we yeah, took we have the 15, but... thing, we can take... Since we took the active that allows us... That increases... That makes the fires better, we might as well just keep taking the fires upgrade right now. Yeah. Uh, so this is the um, first boss. It's the ranger. Ricky. And so he starts off really simple. He's in the center of the screen. His health bar is on the top. Um, 
and you keep hitting him, and eventually you get him low enough, and you'll start, he'll start doing some, like, special boss moves. Um, <laughs> so now he's hiding in a tree, and um, so this boss battle, you have to find him just by hitting the tree. Oh, you found him first try, okay. Um, and he does this a couple more times, and by the end, he um, starts spamming his abilities more, so it's, it's sort of a damage race, you have to kill him as fast as possible. Um, do you want to just skip this? Oh. Oh, no, he found it. Yeah, he's right there. Oh, no, okay. Um, so after you kill a boss, yeah, you, Ray, you go. After you kill a boss, you get to choose um, to add a new character to your party. So then, right now, we have the options of the Lich, the Siren, and the Sword, the Possessed Sword. So right now, we have really high damage because we have the Fire Dragon. So we should take the Siren because the Siren... Um, it applies defense debuffs and attack buffs, and also can heal. Okay. Okay, so this is now the second we advance, after we beat the boss, we advance to the second zone of this area, which is the um, which is the village. We were in the forest before because the and, boss was like yeah. a ranger. And if you notice the uh, all the enemies, they all turn red. I just recolored them, and they're a little bit stronger than they were from the first stage. So the wizard uh, throws like fireballs. The uh, the sword uh, the knights do have more health and they um, they damage you when you hit them in the front this now and then the uh, the archers they shoot two ar arrows instead of one um, and on the side you can see the siren his uh, she her skill is uh, displayed on the right side as well uh, you can skip this okay, so I think you can just skip to the boss we oh. could just let's improve the buff because the buff is pretty good. The debuff is also fine, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Also, the um, the upgrades that are generated are only upgrades that are in your party so far. Yeah. So, so we were only getting, we were only getting fire dragon upgrades before, uh, but now we're getting fire dragon and siren upgrades. So then they're both, they both can get upgraded. Uh, this is a mini boss. This it's the, the bard. The yeah. bard heals and uh, buffs his uh, the the enemies. Okay, just... Yeah, him. No. I think you can keep going. Yeah. Okay, so Let's we're not side. relying on any cooldowns right now, so I guess we should do. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter. Both of them are good. Doesn't matter. Just pick one. Go, 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 go. Skip this. Okay. Okay. Let's just increase. Yeah. Okay. Here's the second boss. Second boss. So he has this flying sword around him. Um, this, uh, this one's called the Town Hero, and what he does is that he has a sword that flies around him, and occasionally he'll either dash or his sword will come out and strike a, an area and deal damage. And he starts off with one more sword, um, but as his health goes down, you can see he gets starts getting more and more swords. So by the end, he starts doing a ton of damage. Um, he has a special move, but yeah, we're not gonna show it. Um, I think we can <laughs> just skip this. Yeah, he has a really, really annoying final move. Okay, okay so Going. let's pick up. Let's pick one. This time we have the option yeah. of the King Slime, the Lich, and the Possessed Sword. Yeah. Okay. Which all do different things. So we so pick the sword. Uh, every three. Oh, this yeah. is um. We just beat the third boss. So this is the third area. And so everything then, got, you know, recolored and buffed and, um, okay, keep going. This is the third area is, um, outside the castle. Okay. Keep, so, yeah. what we're um, gonna aim for is, you'll probably um, get the last boss it's gonna be. Yeah, just go to... Also, the final, uh, the, the third character we added was the Possessed Sword. What he does is that he starts with pretty low base, um, base damage, but then, it gets stronger as uh, it gets stronger as he hits enemies more times. Okay, so also that's the, the final. You part. can kind of see is the circle that she puts around her allies. That uh, that indicates that she's healing them, and you can. Okay. Hey, um, yeah, so this is the uh, yeah. This is the final boss. He has a bunch of mechanics like uh, locking units in cages and uh, locking, uh, making your board move slower, etc. I, we won't spoil anything else about this, so um, <laughs> I guess we're done. We're done. Um, okay. 
Ya. What? Oh. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of static. Oh. So did you plan on making any kind of power-ups with the paddle? doesn't seem like you can do much with it. Um, so in, in the scope of time that we had, we did not um, do anything with the paddle. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, a, a nice... The paddle is, um, is, it, is like a part of the game that, um, that really can't change that much. Like the paddle gets faster as you get more units. But like it's not really something that will affect you that much, and also there are certain buffs, uh, boss skills that affect the paddle. So one of the mini bosses we skipped had um, a a skill that slows the paddle so that it gets hard to move it, yeah, and uh, the king also... had a skill that can lock up the paddle if you stood in an area for too long and if there was an indicator. But we didn't get to that part either. Um, also, the paddle uh, prevents your units from hitting the lava, which um, maybe it wasn't too clear, but when you hit the lava, you take damage, like about a little bit of damage. So not too punishing, but uh, you still would rather not hit the lava. Um, yeah. Help. Hey, everyone. So um, I just want to give a quick reminder that all these games are online and playable. Uh, if you just go to the link that I think is in our linked in our Twitch channel. Um, should be linked in our Twitch channel. It's in the chat a few times. Um, I think it might be in the... What? Yeah, I'll definitely put it in the chat again. I just put it in the chat a couple minutes ago. So, um, yeah, just a reminder that try out these games. If there was something you were unclear about and you wanted to try it out, give it a test. Uh, we're going to go through a small run-through of all the games, just in case you've forgotten because it's been a while. So uh, the first game in the lineup was Bleak Biker. Uh, yep, 
And then the next one was Cupid's Bullet. And then, oh, sorry. Sorry. Wait, Got to start over. I was apparently muted. My oh, bad. okay. So um, you were muted that entire time? Yes. Okay. So, uh, Bleak Biker. Bleak Biker was <laughs> the motorcycle bullet hell. With the pew okay. pews and the tanks. And then there was Cupid's Bullet. Cupid's Bullet was the dating simulator slash bullet hell, where you got dates and then beat up all the other guys who wanted to date your date. And then there was Message Received. Message Received was the real-time strategy game in space. And then Organic. Organic was the game where you played a giant pipe organ. And then there was Puzzled Golf. Puzzled Golf was the mini golf uh, puzzle course. Then there was Quarantine. Quarantine was the game where you attempt to stop a worldwide pandemic. And then there was Sheer Madness. Sheer Madness was the game where you played as a dog and tried to get sheep to the goal. And Source Code. Source Code was the game where you threw words into sentences to dictate the controls of the game. And Speedbot. Speedbot was the 3D platformer with the, the grappling hook and a focus on speedrunning the game as fast as you can. And Starcrap? Starcrap was the top-down shooter type game where you attacked a bunch of poo monsters in Stony Brook and fought the Makilla Gorilla and Professor McKenna. And the Brave Twin Knights? The Brave Twin Knights was the game where you play with another person to solve puzzles as two knights. And then there was World Ender. World Ender was the Brick Breaker type game with fantasy character elements. So right. those were all of the games that were featured. And we thank all of the uh, competitors for creating wonderful games. Thank you to mm -hmm. the judges for uh, asking great questions and for, for judging here. these great games, for being here. Uh, we yeah. also have... Hang a on. Few... Thanks to you, Twitch chat. All you viewers who <laughs> came here to watch yeah. us. The and audience. laughed at my sheep jokes. You guys have been great. I see so... all the clapping. <laughs> we, um, we have a few games that we want to feature that were made by judges that we mm -hmm. just want to get the judges to talk about them. These games are out now, quick. correct? Yeah, those These games, games are out now. Are definitely available on the steam store and in actual stores depending on what they are because they're all different types of things some of them are board games some of them are video games um you can see uh that the games from the judges are linked also in the web page um the stony brook game programming competition web page so you can check out those links there but right now we're gonna go and see if the judges have a few words to say about their games
Ready? Hey. I mean, uh... hey, everyone. Cool. So, um, right now we have uh, a few of the judges here, and they are going to talk about some of their recently released games. Uh, the first one we're showing here is Chrome Evaders. Can we hear a little bit more about that? Uh, yes, you may. Thank you for asking so kindly. So uh, the game I'm working on, Chrome Invaders. It's an arcade-styled mashup of Galaga and Tetris. Believe it or not, it's actually a sequel to a game I made when I was still a student here. Uh, I, I and a friend uh, who is uh, not here tonight. Uh, this, uh, well, why don't we check out the game right now? Uh, the, the link is to the video, but you can go to the website, uh, corundum.games slash chromavators. <clears throat> this is a uh, can I hear the first part of that link again? Sorry. Uh, corundum, C-O-R-U-N. Corundum, uh, can I hear the first part of that link again? Sorry. C-O-R, corundum. Corundum dot... C O R U N D M D U M. Corundum. C O. Okay. Corundum. Hey. Yeah, I'm just gonna. So this is a sequel. Chrome Gators. What made you decide on the name um... Chrome Gators? Oh, okay. Uh, right. Push talk. Um, uh, chroma is, uh, I believe, the Greek word for color, and vaders is, well, uh, suffix of invaders. Uh, uh. Play the game, and you'll see exactly what it means. Uh, anyway, as for how this game... I've been working on this game for the past year. Uh, I started shortly after I graduated. And right now, I'm shot... I think it's still in development. It's not done. Uh, but uh, you can play it as a demo right now. I'm shopping it around uh, for publishers and other uh, people who can potentially help me bring it to consoles and market it. Now, I don't have anything specific to announce uh, right now. I will say that yesterday I had uh, two very productive meetings with two very major platforms you almost certainly have heard of. So, uh, anything else uh, you want me to bring up, or? Uh, Liz, are you still there? <clears throat> we seem to be having a few technical difficulties. I think for now, uh, we're gonna go to the next uh, thing we wanna talk about. Oh, whoa, never mind. okay, we're going in, okay, whoa. I think Liz is having a few internet issues. You yeah, can, uh, I'm having a few problems. You Hold can play on. It out. Uh, press the button that says play now. You can check it out now if you'd like. Oh, okay. So my internet is finally coming back. And that darn internet. <laughs> For a second, I had no idea what was happening. I couldn't hear the chat at all. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> it's okay. It looks like it's working out. Um, start this game. Oh, here you got a I'm full sure. screen. It, I think. You see that full screen button? The controls are on screen. Mm. Ooh, the okay. Zero insert cool. coin, or not zero? O. So hit the O button, Liz. Okay, in the near future, 2000X. We gotta do it, like, in the near future, 2000X. Earth was at peace, and <laughs> we were traveling the stars, until one day we get a signal. 
The Chrome Evaders from another world attacked by surprise. You are in a secret government mission with an experimental weapon. Time is running out. You are our last hope. Can you protect the Earth from a colorful doom? So space is fire. We gotta move it to the next. Z and zero. Okay. Or er, okay. oh. We gotta do this quickly. Oh, okay. I think I entered a qu What? We gotta do this quickly. We got other. offline real quick. Hey, sorry about the technical difficulties, guys. So, um... Chrome Invaders look pretty cool. How about we go to the next thing, Doodlematic by Martin Hortzman. Would you like to talk about Doodlematic? Hey, everybody. Sure, I'd love to. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. So, um, Doodlematic lets anybody make a video game just by drawing a picture. Uh, you draw a picture. You take a picture of the drawing with your phone or tablet. Uh, and then in 15 to 30 seconds, that becomes a playable game on your device. Uh, there's a few different game modes that you could do, some power-ups after you make your game to kind of uh, make it come alive. Um, you can get really creative. It's meant for kids, six and up. We also have a physical kit uh, that we sell in retail stores and on Amazon uh, that teaches game design concepts in kind of a fun visual way. And that's a pretty quick summary. Awesome, thank you. Next we have Paddle Up, which I believe is a VR ping pong game by Shah Pavel Jamal. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so yeah, this, it is what it says it is. It's just ping pong in a virtual reality with a bit of multiplayer support. Let's try to advertise the game, but it was a great fun experience to work on. Um, and also want to recommend anybody here who's interested in the game dev world to consider things like VR, which is a very niche platform today where you know, the and has a lot of creative input where you can design very new experiences. Awesome, thank you. Next up we have Pipeline, a board game created by Ryan Courtney. Is Ryan here? Doesn't look like Ryan's here right now. But uh, it's a pretty fun board game. He came to show it off at uh, our club once. So maybe if he gets here we can talk about it. Uh, next, we have a game called Shotgun Farmers. Uh, do you care to explain what a shotgun farmer is? Yeah, of course. Uh, hey, guys. My name is Quasi. I made Shotgun Farmers. It's a multiplayer first-person shooter where your missed shots grow guns. So all your guns are vegetables. and you shoot at the ground, it grows more <laughs> ammo. Um, so it's out on Steam, coming soon to consoles. Uh, and it's the game that allowed me to go full-time as an indie game developer. So I'm really proud of it. And uh, 
anyone out there wants to become an indie, just my one advice is just keep keep trying. It'll it'll happen for you too. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me as well. Awesome, that's awesome. And this is on Steam right now, right? Uh, it's out on Steam right now. Yes. This and Paddle Up is also on Steam, I think. And then next we have uh, Starring by Andrew Morell and Connor McDermott. You guys want to talk about Starring? Uh, sure. So Starring is a movie trivia game. Uh, you, there's a single player mode or you can have uh, two to four players or teams. Uh, and basically uh, using movie data from IMDb, uh, you know, there's a series of categories. So like the top box office for a year or decade or uh, even some of the uh, American Film Institute top 100 movie lists. Uh, and so there's, you know, it's, it's a trivia game. So each round, one movie is selected from the list and uh, a bunch of clues will be displayed. Uh, the top, you know, the first 10 actors on the cast list for that movie on the IMDb page. Uh, and they're revealed from the the 10th actor to the first actor on the list so that the, uh, the clues become more informative. Uh, and so, yeah, you're just competing to see who can figure out the movie first based on the category and the actors revealed. Awesome. We should play that list. And then next up, we have a game called Super Mash by Mirage Alam. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm a software engineer at a indie game company called Digital Continue. And we created a basically a game that creates games. The way that it works is that the player picks two classic genres from like the their, their genres based off of like the 16-bit era, and then it creates a new short game that mashes the two genres together. So the genres that we have in the game they're like stealth, um, JRPG, action adventure, platformer, Metrovania, which is a way of saying Metroidvania without getting sued. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and there was one more. Uh, but yeah, you, you, uh, uh, you can look at the trailer. Yeah, you can look up the trailer online. It's available right now on Switch, PS4, um, everything, basically. Awesome. And the Thank Epic you. Game Store on PC. Awesome. Thank you. And lastly, yeah. we have something called The Owl League by Stefan Salva Cruz. Yeah, so the Owl League is a uh, multiplayer role-playing game that's played over Discord. Um, and players basically uh, join a magical fantasy sports team that they uh, manage all of the players called magicians, and they compete against the other teams in the league. So it's one big game where you know up to 50 players uh, uh, go on to a Discord and um, you know kind of recreate the fantasy sports uh, magic that you might be missing right now. So that's pretty cool. Thank you so yeah. much, guys, for uh, showing up and hanging out with us at this uh, game competition. For all you viewers out there, if you go to the URL that has been going around in the chat, I believe. You can try out all these. You can find more information about these games. Some of these, you can, I think, there are direct links to trying them out. Otherwise, games like Pipeline, I think, as a board game, you can buy. Doodlematic, you can buy somewhere. But yeah, thanks so much, guys. We appreciate it. And now, I think, Liz, what are we? Are we going to play Regio Vinco now? Um. Is that the plan? I. I think we can. <laughs> <laughs> I can try to screen share again. I don't know if everything's going to go down. Professor McKenna's here, but his... I can't hear him. Can you? I can't hear Professor McKenna. Is he in here? Is he in the chat? There he is. Yeah. He's walking around. Are we still live? We are still live. Uh, I okay, cool. I don't know. I don't know if we should take it down. I feel like we're just having a good time at this point. So then, um... Professor McKenna, do you know that you're muted? He's also deafened, I think, so he can't hear us. <laughs> okay. Hello. McKenna S. Did you get? Did you see all the McKenna S's in the chat? I think we know who the winner is. Do you? Oh, okay. So should we head yeah, over to the other let's, chat? Or? What's the plan, let's Professor? Let's stay right here. Right here? Yeah, we have. I would like to bring in somebody. Uh, All right, guys, we're announcing the winner now. 
on the edge maybe, of my seat. <laughs> maybe maybe we can uh, take down the uh, the screen that we have. Can we do that? Sure, sure. I can put up the the glorious transition slide. <laughs> you want to keep the audio on or? special guests. By the way, I'm here in the CS department. Wait, where are we going? Are we going? Uh... Hey, JJ, can we show ourselves here? Because Oh, yes. Are I we? Wanna still... the... I want to show the plaques and everything. Ooh. All right. Do you want to? S... Yeah, so let's just stay Ooh, here. Big reveal. Even if here. Oh. Yeah, JJ, I have to send you who the winner is, I guess, right? I believe you do. Should we okay. go to the host? Oh, okay. <laughs> Hang on. As soon as Professor McKenna sends me the winner. <clears throat> oh, my God. Why does this have to happen right now? <laughs> it's like right <clears throat> now. I can't Hang send with us, guys. The moment of truth is right there. Right here. <laughs> What is a physically accurate McKenna simulator? Well, given that we have the physically accurate McKenna. We are still live, by the way, guys. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I, you said you wanted to be shown. We're adding, we're adding so to I the showed. tension. We still have uh, on the stream, I think, the judges games up. I think maybe... Could we scroll up and bring up the student games? Uh, yes, give me a quick second. See, this is why I let the, the students judges. run the event, because whenever I'm involved, everything gets ruined. <laughs> <laughs> but I am in the CS department, if you can see me. It's a rather mm. empty place at the moment. All right, are we ready to reveal the winner of the game? <laughs> yeah, I'll bring us to the winner chat. Well, here we are. I do have our plaques, right? And some of our judges are on. Their names are on these plaques, right? These are the plaques for our competition, going all the way back to the first one. And we have our winner from last year with us, Stephen Chen. He's here. And Hello. <laughs> in third place. For this year, 2016, we have Cupid's Bullet. Woo. So that's third place. <laughs> clapping. <laughs> Usually clapping. we would hear clapping in from place the audience, of an audience. But not this time. <laughs> Everybody type clap in the chat like I've seen before. <laughs> they do it at the end of every presentation. <laughs> in second place, we have Quarantine. Woo. Nice. A timely <laughs> game, I guess you could say, right? And Steven, take it away. Uh, I'd like the to congratulate is... the winner. World Ender. Congratulations on winning oh, the yeah. 16th annual awesome. programming Woo. competition. Check World Ender, you are screen. the champion for 2020. Did I say 2016 before? <laughs> 2020. <laughs> 2020. A little 16th. late. The 16th annual. Well, everybody, I want to thank everybody for participating, especially the, the Stony Brook game developers who put this Ooh. event together, set up all the tech. You have no idea how much time they spent doing this, making sure everything went smoothly. And it was Justin all and Jacob and Liz and JJ, and of course our producer, A. Braslov, uh, who did such great work, all of them. Thank you to the judges. Uh, judges, keep in mind, I have shared with you the resumes of all of our student presenters, the finalists. I sent you um, a share. That, so many of them are graduating and may be looking for jobs. I encourage you. Uh, to look at their resumes and think about giving them a shot at your own employer. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you again next year. I think there's an after party somewhere on <laughs> Minecraft. Is that right? I don't know. Or is it Animal we, Crossing? I, I think don't we know. discussed it, but we didn't go through it. <laughs>
Anyway, well, everybody, ask thank if you. you can put something up. Another thing <laughs> is that we have recorded the event, and so we will be posting uh, the full event recording. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. See you next year. Thanks for coming, everyone. Thank you.